as we all wait to see if the president will, in fact, close the border, a fight is brewing over money for the proposed border wall. Last week, the Pentagon transferred $1 billion to the Army Corps of Engineers to build additional barriers along the southern border. It is part of the $2.5 billion that the administration plans to take from the Pentagon budget. There are also plans to take a reported $3.6 billion from the military construction budget. So while most Democrats oppose a border wall entirely, one congressman says that many walls are some walls are necessary. In an interview with Fox News, Congressman Jeff Van Drew of New Jersey said he's in favor of some walls where necessary, but quote, we are not an open border country. Congressman Van Drew joins us now from Capitol Hill to dive into the immigration debate. He serves on the House Committee on Agriculture and the House Committee on Natural Resources, and he's also a member of the Blue Dog Coalition. Congressman, welcome. Oh, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Congressman, tell us, I mean, I imagine that your position on this border wall doesn't endear you to a lot of your Democratic colleagues. So what is it about the, the situation on the southern border that makes you think that a wall is necessary? Well, I, I think most of my colleagues certainly realize that there is a very active and potentially dangerous and potentially inhumane situation occurring at the border and that we do need to do something. There's no doubt about that. And I think people, different people have different thoughts on it. But as we go along and we see literally a thousand individuals a day now, we know that the situation is even becoming more problematic. And you were correct. We are not a nation of open borders. Uh, I believe that we are a nation of the rule of law. And while I am very pro-immigration, it has to be done in an intelligent and thoughtful way. I'd like to speak to the immigration issue a little bit because I think it's one that requires leadership and that there should be compromise there. And frankly, I'm so disappointed that there isn't compromise. So I believe that we do need to have good, safe, intact borders. That includes actual physical border. That includes in some sections a wall. It's not a wall from sea to shiny sea. In some sections, vertical medical struts. Uh, metal struts actually can help a great deal and can be very strong. It, it includes technology. It includes more beds. It includes more manpower. It ensures that our nation is safe, whether it is from drugs, whether it is from individuals, because you know, even though it's a small minority that individuals were caught that were members of gangs, individuals were caught that were, were you know, going to be dispensing drugs. This is something we don't need more of in our country. So I think we do need to maintain our borders. At the same time, we also need to have an intelligent plan to deal with the dreamers so that they can go through a process where they learn about America, they take the test. Uh, it's not just amnesty. They go through an actual process similar to what our grandparents and great-grandparents and other folks did, and then they become American citizens. That is the answer, I believe, for the Dreamers. And quite frankly, I believe it's also the answer for the 11, 12, 13 million folks, whatever it may be, people who are here. They should also go through that process, the regular process of immigration. And finally, and the last step would be to improve the immigration process itself, to have a smoother quicker process that works more accurately, especially for work visas. So what do we have at the end of the day if we do all that? We really showed that leadership. We'd have borders intact, so we wouldn't have the huge problems we have anymore. We'd have our dreamers taken care of, which they deserve to be treated decently. And even the other folks that are here would become Americans after they take their test, after they pledge to the flag, after they learn about America, and they pay their taxes and their Social Security and so forth. So then we have an immigration system that is functioning and a country that's functioning. Congressman, you said we're not a nation of open borders. Do you believe that some of your Democratic colleagues think we should be a nation of open borders? There may be a, a, a group of folks that believe that we should have open borders. I do not. Um, we, we just can't have a nation where people go in and out and we aren't even aware of who they are or what their needs are or what their health condition is, what the cost will be involved in, in trying to take care of them, what the cost will be with drug 
issues obviously being there, with gang issues being there. And that's not the majority. And I really believe that. I believe the majority of these folks are people that are afraid. They're coming from countries we know in Central America that just have ter terrible leadership and, and really lack humanitarian care for their people. So I understand that. But we also, while trying to be a decent neighbor to everybody and helping, we also have to take care of the people in this country. There are still a great number of issues in this country, and people are concerned about their health care. They're concerned about their public safety. They're concerned about their veterans who fought for us, and they need a tremendous amount of help as well. They're concerned about Medicare and Social Security. Con Congressman, why, why is yes. it that you're such a lone voice uh, uh, amongst the Democratic caucus? Why is it that you know some sort of pragmatic admission that there is a major crisis on the southern border isn't made so that at least the type of grand bargain that you're talking about can even begin to be discussed? Right now, so many of your colleagues seem to want to deny that there is a situation at the southern border at all. I... There are some colleagues that want to deny that, and there are some that will admit it. They just don't necessarily agree with how this issue should be dealt with. Um, I think I've laid out a plan, uh, at least in the broader scope, that is pragmatic, um, that could be bipartisan. You know, I, I really sincerely believe the American people, the majority of them, there's, you're not going to please everybody all the time, but I, I believe the majority of Americans would be so proud of us if Republicans and Democrats could come together on this one overarching, overwhelming issue and really come with answers for the people that are here, for the people that are coming through our poorest uh, uh, borders and, and make us safer but also make us humane. We should be a humane you know, country, and we have to take care of the kids, but it can't be just open borders, and it can't be letting people spill in and letting them go throughout the country. That's never been the way in the United States. Um, we should have an immigration system that is legal, that is safe, that is appropriate, and that is humane. We can do this. It requires leadership. It requires courage, it requires guts, and it requires bipartisanship. Congressman, do you think that you can have a good faith conversation with your colleagues across the aisle? I mean, the president launched his campaign saying that Mexico is sending us their rapists and criminals and some, I assume, are good people. We had a congressman, Republican congressman, on here yesterday talking about how immigrants might be bringing Ebola. I mean, are you able to have a good faith negotiation and conversation with people who talk like that? Um, and, and that's harder. Some of those folks are, are, are more difficult. So I've tried to, and I've also tried to have conversations, and I will continue to do so with my colleagues that, um, you know, believe just that we really shouldn't do too much of anything. And then there's folks at every level in between that. But I guess what I would be trying to say to everybody is this is a serious issue. Let's not overplay it. Let's not try to scare people. But at the same time, let's not underplay it and realize we can't ignore it and we must be do something about it. And we can do it in a bipartisan way. And I'd like, I would love to see that leadership. I, I, I really would. I don't want to see the borders closed. Uh, we do a lot of trade with Mexico. And I know for a fact that if we close the borders, not only will it hurt Mexico, it will hurt the United States as well. So I would think a more intelligent and better way would to be to begin this bigger picture discussion uh, in the longer term of how we're just going to settle this issue for once and for all. It has gone on for so many years. Um, quite frankly, I can say, not as somebody new into government, because I've been a state senator for many years and served at many levels of government, but somebody who is relatively new to Congress, it is a display of the dysfunction that people who are on the outside don't like. You know, Absolutely, real folks, Congressman. If you, go, if, you, you, if you all would just take a walk with me, and walk down any street in any city, come into my district, any almost any district, almost any district, and say to people, shouldn't we be able to deal with this as leaders? You elected us as leaders, the highest leaders literally in the country, and yet for year after year, literally just, we're getting to the point now, it's going to be decade after decade, we just can't seem to handle it. If we can't handle these problems, then we don't deserve to be there. So Congressman, let's really start working on them, and let's work on them together. Congressman, which of the 2020 Democratic candidates do you think most aligns with your pragmatic, pragmatic position on immigration? 
Um, I, I'd have to really review all the positions on, on immigration uh, of all the candidates, and um, I, I haven't seen anything that exactly it, it works along the lines that, that I mentioned, and I think everybody's so concerned now because it's such an early stage of the primary, and I think they're afraid to put out to some degree what their real positions are. I think we will hear more, we will hear more as we go along. I know the New Jersey delegation in Hull supported Jersey's favorite son, which was obviously Senator Booker, and we're going to have to hear more from him, but hear more from everybody. I mean, I think we're going to have to hear more from Joe Biden, and I know he has his issues now, and others as well. But I think Americans, the majority of them, do believe um, that there is a place for immigration without question and that it should be done in an orderly, legal, safe, humane way. You know what we're doing, too, by the way, by not dealing with the issue, by kind of just letting it float out there and being afraid to deal with it in a very strong way, um, a lot of people are getting hurt. Women are being raped. Children yeah. are being hurt. Um, yeah, children, right. are, children are being used inappropriately to get into the border that that's not good congressman uh, van drew from the great state of new jersey thank you for joining us this morning we appreciate it thanks congressman thank you it was great to be with you take care next on rising what will the house investigation into white house security clearances uncover and where does the potential biden campaign stand today in light of the me too movement and the gop says no to a third round of the health care debate the hills editor-in-chief bob cusack debriefs us all on this as rising rolls on